Welcome everyone. My name is Spencer Gaynor. I am an admissions counselor at the Evergreen State College as well as a former student myself. I uh, use he, him pronouns. I am from Vancouver, Washington um, and I'm really excited to have some of the student ambassadors at Evergreen here with us today to answer some of your questions. So they will now introduce themselves. Hello, my name's Tasha. I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently a junior at the school. I also am a student athlete competing on the volleyball team. Um, I'm originally from Eastern Washington, so Pullman, Tri-City area, and I'm studying law and political science at the school. I'm muted. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Jared. Um, I use he him pronouns. Um, I'm a senior. Uh, and Evergreen and I'll be graduating in the spring. Um, I'm studying environmental science and outdoor leadership but I'm also involved with the outdoor program on campus. Hi, I'm Jasmine. I use she her pronouns. Uh, I'm from Olympia although I'm originally from the Middle East. I'm an, an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm half Italian and half Arabian. Um, I've been in the States 20 years and I am going back to school now as an adult. Um, I have joined Evergreen as a transfer student. I am focusing primarily on writing and public speaking, cultural diversity, and I graduate this June. My name is Nikki. I use she, her pronouns. My area of emphasis is business and sustainability studies, and I'm from Searchlight, Nevada, and I graduate fall 2020. Hello, my name is Kenny. I am currently a senior at Evergreen State College. I primarily study uh, business and psychology, and I'm just from up north in Tacoma, Washington. Hi there, my name is Sebastian. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm originally from Denmark. I came to Evergreen right out of high school, and I'm now a senior studying business administration and marketing. Hey, uh, my name is Arlo. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I was born in Seattle and was raised um, in the area. Um, I'm a freshman at Evergreen and um, my area of emphasis is social science for environmental solutions. Thank you everyone for those great introductions. At this time, I will be moderating the questions that have been submitted. Um, the first question is going to be for Jared and Nikki. And this question is, can you describe Evergreen's campus? Yeah, um, so we are a thousand acres of campus um, and we're about 10 minutes away from the main Olympia area. Um, so we have 200 acres of developed campus um, and 800 acres of forest surrounding us. So it's a really nice combination of being close to um, a town that has other things going on stuff um, then also having our own kind of separate little community um, out in the woods and we, we spend a lot of time um, in class in the woods and also just recreating out there and doing things that we enjoy. And like Jared said the forest is nearby so that allows for a lot of wildlife to come onto campus including deer which makes it very lively. My favorite place to hang out on campus is the woods on sunny days and when it's not sunny I really like the light lounge on the bottom floor of the library which helps uh, promote vitamin D production. Uh, the next question is going to be for Seb and Jasmine. So say someone wasn't clear on the difference between programs and classes, how would you explain the difference? All right, well, um, the difference between uh, programs and classes. Programs are uh, interdisciplinary classes put together under one big umbrella of 16 credits. So you essentially sign up for a program that is 16 credits or 14 credits or eight credits, 12 credits. Um, but it's a variety of classes put together and all kind of uh, interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinarily taught and um, attended. Classes, on the other hand, are smaller. They are either um, two credits or four credits, and you can sign up for various classes to create your own program, basically. I'll add that what's nice about them is that they're 16 credits. So uh, like Jasmine said, it's, it's kind of like an all-encompassed uh, class but it's a full course load, so you'll only need to be in one each quarter. And uh, what's nice about that is that right off the bat, there's no conflicting assignment deadlines. And also everything you're learning is related to the central theme or the like, question of that program. 
but kind of gives context to the purpose or context and purpose to why you're learning something that you normally wouldn't choose. Um, and I think that that's an experience that'd be uh, difficult to find outside of Evergreen, outside of programs. Great answers, both of you. Thank you very much. This next question is for Tasha and Kenny. I've heard Evergreen students don't get grades. How does that work? So instead of grades, we use an evaluation system. So what really happens is you get 16 credits basically for the program. And then with um, incompleting credit, anything like that, your faculty can take away credits and that basically equals your grade. But evaluations really center on evaluating how much work and effort and what you learned from the class into your evaluation. So it's not just a letter grade because that really doesn't tell you how much effort, how much work, how much you participated in the class, anything like that. Instead, the professor actually really gets to know you. So he has an accurate evaluation of how you really did in the class, which is a lot more accurate and you know better for you because you can learn uh, what to work on for future classes and everything else. Yeah, and to tag on to that, I think it's um, not having grades it has never been a handicap because I, I, I know so much more about what I've done and where I'm going and what to improve on. Because when you get these narrative evaluations at the end of the quarter, um, you really get to reflect on how you've done and you end up having a meeting with your professor and uh, you, you really get to go over that. I think it's really important. And it's also important to note that this that these uh, narrative evaluations don't hinder things like transferring to other colleges or going to graduate school and things like that. So if anything, it's like non-bias um, letters of recommendation, right? And you have a lot of them. So uh, it's a really fascinating way to do things and it really um, promotes growth, I think, as a student. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up on the same concept of not having grades. And this question is for Jared and Seb. Um, if there aren't grades, would someone who is transferring to another college or applying to a grad school have any trouble with that process? No, and, and kind of adding on to what Kenny just said, um, it's, it's, it's sort of like um, having a bunch of personal recommendation letters uh, from your faculty. So in a way, it, it actually helps you get in in some ways. Jared, do you want to talk about um, converting? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we do have a process where you can convert your narrative evaluation into a GPA if you need that for applying to grad school or sometimes also just jobs will need that. Um, and so that's a great way to fulfill those requirements that grad schools might have. Um, as a science student, I've looked into grad schools and um, it can be daunting at first for them to um, look at a narrative evaluation just because it's a little bit thicker than a general transcript from a school. But um, like Kenny and Seb were saying, you have all of these letters of recommendation and your faculty is talking about the specific things that you've done in classes and, and how you've worked and how you've improved as a person. Um, so it's, it's really beneficial as a whole. Um, and Evergreen is really focused on, in the science specifically, um, making sure sure that you're receiving the training and like for specific instruments and things like that they're not just going to hand off the work to a grad student to do for you they're going to teach you how to do those processes and you're going to have these opportunities as an undergraduate student that you might not have at a typical um, college somewhere else where they're just going to hand off the work to someone else to do for you. Uh, kind of transitioning into more out of the classroom stuff, this next question is for Arlo and Tasha. What do Evergreen students do for fun? One great thing about the college that was mentioned a little bit earlier is there is a thousand acres with the college and 800 of that is forest. So a lot of what students like to do is, you know, go on the trails. There's many trails that lead down to a quarter mile of beachfront. Um, those are also used in a lot of the classes, but it's just a really gorgeous campus with a lot of nature. So there's a lot of things you can do there. And also there's many clubs and recreational activities that we'll kind of mention a little bit later that really um, offer a lot of experiences for students on campus. So obviously uh, nature and uh, being out in the woods is a really big part of the Evergreen experience because there are so many um, trails on campus, um, but also in the greater Olympia area, um, there are plenty of parks um, and trails down to the water, up mountains. Um, walking in nature is a really big 
um, thing here in Olympia. Um, but also additionally, um, I found that um, despite the kind of 90s grunge phase being over here in Olympia, um, there still is a really cool, vibrant, young music scene. Um, so there's a lot of music uh, downtown as well as coming up into the neighborhoods. Um, there are a lot of young artists kind of starting their work here in Olympia, um, and it's a really cool place to come and experience that. Thank you very much. I know that's a big part of something that students think about when they are looking at colleges. Um, so this next question is for Tasha and Jared. Um, what organized sports and other organized recreation opportunities are available at Evergreen? At Evergreen, we uh, participate in many intercollegiate sports. So we're part of the Cascade Collegiate Conference and the NAIA. And we have men and women's basketball, men and women's track and field, men and women's soccer, and women's volleyball. We also collegiately compete in disc golf and have a gorgeous disc golf course that goes across campus and through the woods. Very beautiful. Um, they're not a part of the NAI, but they also compete at a different collegiate level. In addition to that, we have some um, like intramural open volleyball, basketball, soccer um, that anybody can join and just um, play and have fun in if they want to. Um, we also have the outdoor program on campus um, that I mentioned earlier I'm a part of. Um, so we, we run about three or four trips every quarter um, snowshoeing, climbing, backpacking, hiking, all of those things are within a really um, short drive of Olympia. So we have access to all of those different activities. Um, within the trip fee, you're getting things like um, the van to take you there, gear that you need. Um, so we don't want those to be barriers for you to get outside. Um, and then we also will rent out gear to you if you want to do your own trips um, on your own time. So we just really want to provide um, evergreen students access to the outdoors, um, equipment that they need, information, maps, all of those things that you need to get outside. We have. Uh, this is a question that we definitely have always heard a lot, um, and this one is for Nikki and Jared. What are the food options like on campus and where are your favorite places to eat? The Faming Eggplant is one of the food options that we have offer and that was started up um, from students with an independent learning contract and it is currently a cooperative model ran by students and a professor and that is my favorite option to choose from because it is affordable and sustainable. The other options that we have include the greenery which is an all-you-can-eat cafeteria and they have um, nutritional values information to give to students for a variety of dietary restrictions and they also have Tapio's Pizzas, Wandering Burritos, and the Einstein's Fable Bros. I would agree with my uh, with Nikki that my favorite place is um, the Flaming Eggplant. They have a really um, good selection of local um, good food. Um, in addition, um, I think the Organic Farm Stand is a really great place to get produce on campus. They don't really have prepared foods, but um, they do like greens and um, they sell stuff throughout the year from our organic farm on campus. And so it's a really great way for students to get um, fresh local produce. Great. Thank you very much. I'd have to argue my favorite place is the Wandering Burrito, but that's just me. Um, this next question is for Tasha and Seb. Uh, how many undergraduates attend the Olympia Evergreen campus and what can you tell me about the student demographics? So we have about 2,400 undergraduate students at the OLLI campus. Um, and there's a large, Evergreen is a great place because it has a large variety of communities at the school. So we have a lot of people going back to college, you know, later in life, a large LGBTQIA plus community as well. Um, and that's really apparent in the education at Evergreen, specifically the seminars. Seminars are a great way to learn about the background of your fellow students and really participate in active listening. So it's, it's a very wide variety on campus and it's just a great community to be a part of. I don't know how much more I, I could add to that besides just sort of echoing that I, there's a lot of uh, value in having diverse viewpoints and experiences uh, when it comes to seminar and that's a very integral part of Evergreen's learning model. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. Uh, this next question, I know it's a, kind of a big question. You brought up the point that there's a lot of students who come back to school later on in life. So this question is for Jasmine and Nikki. 
will someone who has been out of school for a few years have trouble fitting in as an older student? This is my favorite question. I think the other person that's going to be answering with me is Kenny. It's Kenny. Um, not yeah, <laughs> don't worry. So we are the two oldest people in the collective of ambassadors, uh, and we talk about it all the time. This is definitely my favorite question to answer because I, um, I attended school in my early youth. Um, I was a dance major, which was super fun because I was into it. Uh, later on, I started a family and I decided to homeschool my kids, which was really wonderful because I love to learn. And so when I was ready to go back to school and complete my education and actually get a bachelor's, not just an associate, I realized that dance was not going to be the route I was going to continue. I love writing. I love uh, speaking about my culture and um, kind of promoting cultural diversity. And Evergreen was the perfect fit for that because it allowed me to work independently. It allowed me to create um, kind of a a collective of, of friends and colleagues. There's a camaraderie in the relationships that you form in classes, in programs, through seminars, but also in independent work, uh, whether you're uh, paired up with a faculty that's your sponsor or whether you're doing group work with other students through the Student Originated Studies program, the SOSs, which I've, I'm in right now. So it's, it's a it's a wonderful space for uh, returning adults to kind of explore either a whole new world or deepen what they have started in the first place. Um, Kenny. A lot of those are really good points. I came back uh, when I was 27 because I, uh, I had gone to a tech college, became a commercial diver, and then started my own company. Um, I had incurred a couple injuries and wanted to start making some changes. And so when I finally came out of the workforce, I, wanted, I, I thought that was a good time to come back to college um, and, and, change, and change paths. And for me, and this has been said by like Tasha and, uh, and Seb, is having a diverse group of people is what I needed and wanted. And being able to have people like Jasmine around me that are also um, a bit older and some of us are doing really independent work. And then when we come together to collaborate, it's, it, it creates this synergy that's, that's so nice. And it, and it reminds me of what it's like not in college, right? So we're do, it always feels like I'm, I'm just working like I, I this is just what life is right, kind of supposed to be for me and it's why I chose to come back here is because the freedom I have and the the ability to do things like independent work and also the ability to collaborate with such a diverse um, amount of people and so it's been a fascinating experience and I don't think that uh, at any point in time I've ever felt like I was this person as uh, compared to those people. I've always felt like this is a community that we come together and collaborate and we have a lot of freedom to do a lot of really amazing things. So it was a, it was a smooth and nice transition. Thank you for those perspectives, Kenny and Jasmine. Um, this next question is for Nikki and Arlo. And I know something that a lot of students consider very much when looking at different colleges. What are the on-campus housing options like and can students choose their own roommates? Yeah, um, so there are a variety of options on campus. Um, there are both the dorms um, and the apartments. Um, so in the dorms, you can choose to live in a double, a single or a super single. Um, those are all various uh, sizes um, with various amounts of roommates. You can choose to be in a suite um, where you're in kind of a space shared with other rooms sharing a bathroom, or you can be along a hallway um, where if you're in bathroom shared with another room. Um, there are also the apartments um, where there will be either four or six people in an apartment with a shared bathroom um, and kitchen space. Um, those generally tend to house um, upperclassmen, so sophomore and up. Um, but it is flexible, so really you can go with your preference. Um, and a fantastic thing about living on campus um, is that it is really, really, really close um, to all the rest of the happenings um, on the campus. So um, your commute time is really uh, almost zero. To add to that, students can choose their roommates with a request through residential and dining services. And there's a kitchen option for people living in the dorms. When I was a freshman living in the dorms, we did have some potlucks in the sun kitchen, which built a great sense of community. And right outside the sun kitchen is a little courtyard area where we would have drum circles and dance. And that was a highlight of living in the dorms for my freshman year. And there's also laundry mats provided for apartments and dorms as well. Thank you. Uh, this next question is for Jasmine and Seb again. What is the city of Olympia like? Olympia is a wonderful um, community-oriented town, it, uh, city. It, um, 
it houses several really cool events during the year. Uh, one of my favorites is the farmer's market. Um, it's not quite an event, but they do house events, but the actual farmer's market is open year round, which is super awesome. You can go and get delicious, fresh local food, local produce, as well as uh, attend events. We have arts walk, which happens in the fall and in the spring. Unfortunately, right now, uh, it's not happening, but we uh, have in the spring arts walk, the really beautiful and stunning um, procession of the species parade. Um, lots of really cool local restaurants with live music, tons of local artists, performers. Um, yeah, and of course, the woods. Olympia feels like a small town, but it, it has like plenty of things to do. There's a lot of restaurants and stores to go to, um, but there's also like forests everywhere. There's water access, um, there's mountains nearby. And then plus it's right on I-5, which means it's really easy to get to Seattle and Portland. And I think those are my favorite things about Olympia, kind of that all in one sort of feeling. Um, so if you wanna go shopping or go hiking, or um, it's, it's really easy to do those things because of the location. Awesome, thank you. This last question is for everyone, and I know something that all of you have a lot to say about. What is your favorite thing about Evergreen? My first favorite thing about Evergreen is the nature. It is so gorgeous outside, and a lot of the classrooms actually face nature, so it's really nice just to be able to look outside, see the greenery. Um, and after class or after practice for me, it's really nice to be able to walk outside, realize I can't be mad about anything because I'm in the middle of a gorgeous forest and just surround it. Um, another thing I really, really enjoy about the college is the education system. I really uh, feel like it sets you up for success. And um, a quote that I believe really helps with um, attributing to that is Galileo said that you cannot teach a man anything you can only help him to find it within himself. I really feel like Evergreen helps with that. And it really is what you put into your education is what you're gonna get out of it. So I love that model and I think it's great. Yeah, I think that that was, that was spot on, Tasha. Um, I agree with most of that. Um, and my favorite things is outdoors, outdoors ability to go and do um, almost any activity outside that you want to within like an hour and a half from here um, is really incredible. Um, I also really love the freedom that Evergreen provides and that's built into our academic model um, and how we do things here is that you're able to pursue your passions and if that's maybe not exactly what you want to do full time, you still have time here at Evergreen to do those different things that you might want to to just do as side hobbies or things. Um, or you can also incorporate those into um, what your career is going to be after you leave here, um, which is a really, really cool thing to be able to experience while you're in college. I never thought of doing a quote. That was amazing, Tasha. It, like, it makes me think about it because my favorite thing about Evergreen is, is like the way we have this learning model. And right behind me, I have Madam CJ Walker. And she says, I got my start by giving myself a start. And I feel like that's so Evergreen, right? Is like the ability to say like, I. I have the freedom to do this and I can go tackle that. Things like independent learning contracts really have always given me the freedom to say like, I want to do this and I want to tackle this thing and be able to go do it. And I, for me, it provides that freedom that I believe personally that will help us springboard into our next step beyond evergreen. And I think that that's, that that's really cool. My favorite thing about Evergreen is the community that is available. There's a variety of people for us to grow together, and there's a variety of events to attend in the community as well, not only on campus, but outside of campus, including music and art events. So that is my favorite part. Um, I feel like a lot of you have mentioned freedom, so I'm gonna echo some of that, but I will add a little bit of a uh, personal anecdote in here and say that um, the freedom to explore new subjects while having it be relevant to your education is kind of my favorite part. And um, I was in a program called Working Artists, which focused on how to sustain yourself as an artist. Um, among other things, 
it combined art and business. And so I learned how to do printmaking, which on its own is something I would have never willingly signed up for. Um, printmaking, in my opinion, and if you're unfamiliar, it's a medium that can be used to create these like beautifully unique art pieces. The only thing is it's so, so, so tedious and it takes hours of planning and even longer to execute. Um, surprisingly though, at the end of the quarter, and in the context of business and personal finance, I learned so much about finance through printmaking, specifically like long-term and short-term investments. So long-winded way of saying that uh, being able to explore new things while having it be relevant is hands down my favorite. Yeah, several um, several of the wonderful ambassadors mentioned a lot of the freedom in especially exploring your own interests. I spent three quarters, maximized all of the allowed uh, credit time to do independent work, doing independent work. And actually, during my time at Evergreen, this very quarter, I finished writing a book, The Story of My Life. It's a memoir, and I'm very, very excited about it. I worked and collaborated with a faculty on campus, Sarah Huntington, who is writing professor who's absolutely wonderful and I absolutely adore her. Uh, so working independently and having that freedom to do that was really wonderful. Um, it, it all goes towards my degree. So ultimately I'm doing something for myself to further myself as a person, as a student, and build on my future career as a writer and as a speaker and educator. And doing all that, putting it towards my degree was kind of a highlight. And then I'll also, I can't not say the campus is so stunning and beautiful um you know when you are in class for a long period of time and then you get these breaks and you go outside and you go for a hike you forget you're in class because you're surrounded by this beautiful nature you can in 10 minutes be on the beach uh so the, the campus in of itself the community and of course all the personal freedom you have to pursue your passions yeah so obviously freedom has been mentioned a lot that's a really big thing at evergreen um, but I wanted to bring up the structure um, because when you are taking a 16 credit class and you're not doing independent work, um, that's actually my favorite part about Evergreen um, because um, when you're with one group of students, um, at whether it's 25 or 40, um, uh, doing 16 credits of work, 40 hours a week together with that one group of students, you really kind of connect with them um, and can create those learning communities um, that are so valuable at Evergreen. Um, so. Uh, if you want to do independent work uh, and have total freedom and autonomy, you totally can. And if you want to learn in communities in a class with structure, um, it's designed in a really nice way where you can kind of build on your, uh, on your learnings with your community members who you will learn with. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Those were all great answers. And I just want to thank all of the ambassadors for being here and answering all of these questions, as well as everyone at home for tuning in today. Um, we look forward to being back next time to answer your questions, and we hope you guys have a great day.